Hi everyone, I'm Paul Grimal from the Surrealist and the University of Paris-Saclay. Today, I will introduce TIAM, a metric for evaluating blindment in text-to-image generation. I collaborated with my supervisor, Hervé Le Borgne, Olivier Ferret, and Julien Touril. Let me start with a brief overview of text-to-image models, which leverage natural language to generate images. Users express their thoughts in text, and the model creates images reflecting the written content. Currently, among the most advanced architecture are diffusion models, such as table diffusion. These models are trained by introducing noise to images and learning to denoise the added degradation. We can then generate new images by starting noise and iteratively denoising the noise until we obtain a new image. Additionally, the diffusion process can be guided by text representation from models like T5 or Clip. However, we often need to generate multiple images to obtain satisfactory results because all of the images don't reflect the prompt contents. These issues are known as text alignment failures, such as catastrophic neglect, where one or more objects are missing or sometimes mixed with other elements, as in image A, attribute binding, where some attributes are not correctly bound by the models, as in image B. Evaluating generative images is challenging. Some automatic metrics exist. The Freshet Inception Distance and Inception Score assess if generated images resemble real ones. Text image similarity computes distance between images and prompt with a clip model. However, it is only an average tendency and it is difficult to interpret the score. There are also semantic problems like you can switch words and obtain almost similar score. This is not suitable if you want to measure precisely syntactic aspect. The semantic object accuracy uses the caption available in Coco to generate images and detect whether the mentioned class in the prompt appear in the image. Lastly, we can employ human annotators to assess the quality of generated samples. We introduce a novel metric called TIAM, Text Image Alignment Metric, specifically designed to address attribute binding and catastrophic neglect. Unlike existing automatic metrics, TIAM offers a clear focus on this critical aspect. TIAM operates similarly to semantic object accuracy, but incorporates prompt template to enhance flexibility. We generate a set of prompts containing n objects, providing a more adaptable approach than the fixed Coco captions. This allows us to delve into syntactic aspects, such as studying the impact of an object's position in the prompt, or observing the model's behavior when dealing with multiplied objects and attributes. The metric is easy to interpret, presenting results in the form of a success rate meaning that TIAM indicates the proportion of images that align with the prompt. So how does TIAM work? We define a set of objects and optionally a set of attributes. We create a template T to be filled out with all possible combinations of N objects and attributes, forming the set of prompts. We establish a set of noise to initiate the reverse diffusion process. It is important to generate multiple images per prompt to take account of the random nature of model success. We then generate images conditioned by the prompt and detect the presence of mentioned objects and attributes. We grade each image accordingly. Finally, we compute the mean of all grades to determine the proportion of aligned image. We can obtain side results with our methods. We can, for example, aggregate score per initial noise. Here you can see an overview of the pipeline. It exists a multitude of attributes to specify an object. With TIAM, we focus on the 11 universal basic scholars determined by Berlin and Kay. Participants in their research selected the most typical example for each color, which we adopt as our reference colors. Our evaluation involves comparing the colors of detected objects to ensure they align with the specified reference colors. After introducing TIAM, I will present our key results. Firstly, a few words about the implementation. We employ Yolo V8 as our detector, so other options are possible. We use Coco labels and colors as attributes. We evaluate latent diffusion models, an unclip model, and the cascade diffusion model. We begin by evaluating catastrophic neglect by using only a set of objects. Using this set, we fill out template with one, two, three, and four objects. You can see that models struggle to represent more than two objects achieving less than 20% of successful images with three objects in the prompt. Next, we assess the occurrence of objects based on their position in the prompt to answer the question, is there a relation between the position of objects in the prompt and the generation capacity of the models? Notably, the first object is more likely to be generated compared to the next ones. 
Our primary hypothesis is that the training is biased toward captions where the main subject is frequently placed at the beginning, but more research is needed. Using a set of objects and two object templates, we generate images and aggregate team scores per noise. By examining the success rate per initial noise across all prompts, we observe a significant variation in performance. Certain noises easily generate multiple objects. We can take advantage of this and select noises with superior performance. For example, observe the difference between our images generated with our worst and best noise. The rocket doesn't appear in the first image. Also, based on the charm score, we can create a distance measure between objects. The closer objects are, the more the model struggles to represent them together. For stable diffusion, 1.4, it appears that we can group certain set of animals, for instance. It seems that model struggles to generate similar objects together. We calculate correlation between semantic distance and time distance, revealing a slightly negative correlation. This indicates that generating objects together become more challenging as their semantic closeness increase. Further research is needed in this area. Next, the attribute binding results. We start by computing the charm score by only considering catastrophic neglect even if there are attributes in the prompt. We want to see the impact of adding attributes on the generation capacity of objects. When we introduce attributes to the objects, we observe a notable impact on the score, particularly with two objects and attributes. Attributes confuse the models. We then extend the charm score computation to include both attribute binding and catastrophic neglect. We observe that the models fail to assign the appropriate colors, even when the object is present. In addition, we observe that the first object is better assigned than the second. The first object is more likely to be correctly generated and bound than subsequent objects in the prompt. In a human study involving 32 images, we task individuals with rating whether the generated image reflected the prompt. Cham exhibits a stronger correlation compared to blip and clip scores. It is important to highlight that defining whether the color is correctly bound is a challenging task. For instance, in these pictures, there is a low agreement among annotators. It's difficult to say if the giraffe is blue or purple or something between. To sum up, we created a new metric focusing on catastrophic neglect and attribute binding. The metric is more understandable than clip score and better correlated with human decision making. We showed that models struggle with multiple objects and attributes. We showed that some initial noises work better than others and also that first objects in the prompt are more likely to appear and be correctly bound. However, there are some limitations. For a more comprehensive evaluation, consider using other metrics to test, for example, aesthetic aspect. Maybe if you want to apply TIAM to different objects, consider utilizing alternative detection models. Finally, the template approach with testing all combinations may become cumbersome. We propose a proxy in the paper to approximate results. So thank you for watching and please you can find more results and details in the paper.